Isaiah chapter number 2. We've seen the condition so far of uh, Jerusalem and Judah. They're wicked. They're vile. They're sickly. Unclean. And yet God still reaches out to them and says, Come. The word of that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days, second advent, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Now you cannot say that's today. In the millennium, the earth is going to change. The valleys are going to be made plain. The, the, the crooked way is going to be made straight. Jerusalem is going to be a mountain. And all the people are going to come to this mountain to see the Lord Jesus Christ and worship him. The twelve apostles of the Lamb will be there. All those that are, are church age saints that serve and, and, and suffered for the Lord will be reigning in cities. Three times in a year. Listen, the law is going to be in the tribulation. The law is going to be in the millennium. Three times a year, all the males were to come to Jerusalem. We just read today in Numbers that on the Passover, you're to be there. Mary and Joseph brought their child to Jerusalem on the eighth day like they're supposed to. Nations, not just Jews, nations will be coming to the Lord. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and the house of God at, of Jacob. You better have the God of Jacob. We don't have the God of Jacob. You ain't got God. And he will teach us of his ways. Imagine the Lord. Everyone says Jesus Christ. No, he was just a teacher. Yes, he is. He's also God. Can you imagine sitting down in the millennium and letting the Lord Jesus Christ teach you? Imagine when they come to the, to the, to the temple and he'll show you what needs to be done and where to go and how to do it. Jesus said, I'm the way, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, the law is coming back, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice it says many people. It doesn't say all. Even in the millennium with the Lord Jesus Christ there, not all will follow him. So you get somebody comes up to you, oh, let me see the Lord Jesus Christ, let him come. And they ain't going to do nothing. Do you realize that the Jews heard God spoke in Exodus 20 upon the mountain? Do you realize God supernaturally gave them this kind of bread that they didn't even know that, that sufficed them for 40 years? Do you realize they didn't need to go to Walmart and buy shoes and clothing? It, it, Come on, if you don't need to buy your children shoes for 40 years, and you've done all you've done to God, you got them angry, and you didn't even end up in the land? Don't have some idiot today in, in the church that, well, if you show me God. Well, there are going to be people in the millennium who are still not going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize when, when Satan is loosed, he gathers an, an army against God. And God just wipes them out, but he gets an army. And he, the word, the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 John, John 1 and 1, shall judge among the nations. Oh, there's, you imagine somebody walking up to Jesus, judge not least. He, oh, I want to see that. Judge not least, ye be judged. Let's see them say that. He shall rebuke many people so there are people in the millennium who are going to do wrong I'm not going to sit underneath a preacher like that well, you, what about when you sit underneath God see the, the curse is off the earth but man still has his nature
and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Now you want a big laugh? That part, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, is on the UN building in New York City. You know how many wars we've had since the United Nuts have gathered together? I, what a place to have that. I wonder if it's a King James pony. Probably is. Imagine an RSV guy going up to the United Nuts building there and see quoted in a King James Bible. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. You know that every war that we've had in the world became a new instrument of torture? You say, what do you mean? Submarines were improved in World War One and World War Two. The U-boats almost destroyed England. The tank. Why would you need a tank in peacetime? The tank was developed in war. Grenades came from war. You know, most of your inventions come from wartime. Silly putty, slinky, spam were all products from the war. I forget which war it is, but they say slinky. There's a whole bunch of slinky in, tree, uh, in trees all over the place. You know, why? It was used like a radio, uh, a radio antenna. Leave it to America to go somewhere and leave their garbage like they've done on the moon. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. What's going on in the Middle East right now? What's going on in Turkey right now? What's going on in Iraq right now? When you got the Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem saying, listen, if you've done wrong, I'm going to judge you. If you don't get right, go jump in the lake of fire that's down where the Dead Sea is. You know, what was that family there in Numbers? Did the earth open up and swallow them up? The earth is going to open up. You're going to see the lake of fire. The Bible says our two or three witnesses. Imagine having a Christian who is reigning in the city bring you to one of the apostles, number two, and the one of the apostles bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ, and then you're cast in the lake of fire. Neither shall they learn war anymore. So there is peace coming. What's it spoken about when we come back with the Lord Jesus Christ, Joel says? An army. Thou shalt not kill. You don't know your Bible. Shut up. O house of Jacob. You know what? That's important. That's not the house of Isaac. Isaac didn't give birth to Jacob. I mean, not Isaac. Um, Ishmael. It's not the house of Ishmael. I apologize. Isaac gave birth to Jacob, not Ishmael. You better not have the God of Ishmael. And I just may put my neck on line. It's not the God of Ishmael. It's the God of Jacob. Come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. John chapter 3. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Not John the Baptist. He's not that light. But he came bearing witness of the light. John chapter 3 speaks about the light. If you don't have the God that is of Jacob, you're walking in darkness, Mr. J.W. When you don't believe that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. That's a half light. That's a dimmer switch. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. Now look at that. We verses one through five. Hey, here comes the Messiah. Here comes we're, we're on high. We're on a mountain. We're worshiping the nations are our God. Amen. And wait a minute. You forsaken the house of Jacob? Let's get back to reality, Ben. You know there were eight men in him. Verses one through five. Amen. Amen. It's all right, Isaiah. You're the man. 
Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. Oh, shut up. It's, it's noon. You've gone over time, Isaiah. Pack it up. Because they have replenished, filled, supplied from the east. Not God. They're looking for to man for their support. They're looking to horses for their support. We'll see that. And our soothsayers like the Philistines. Philistines were an enemy of God. They worship Dagon. They're the ones that came out against Israel and, and, and Goliath came out cursing the gods of the Jews. And here they are being with the Philistines, like them. We weren't supposed to be like them. And they pleased themselves in the children of strangers, non-Jews. Absolutely what the law told them not to do. Their land, Israel, also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Nahum 2 3. Near is there any end of their chariots? You know, they jostle one of ones in the streets. They're relying on horses. The king was told not to go to Egypt to get horses. They're relying on animal for strength. Now, just an interesting note I have here is. In the U.S. for horses, there are 9,500,000 horses. In China, there's 6,823,465 horses. Mexico, there are 6,350,000 ,000 horses, the top three nations. In America, leads them. Uh-oh. America's following the way of Jerusalem and Judah. The land is also full of idols. How many blocks do you, do you have to walk in America to find a church that has idols? Including the Baptist churches. There's a Baptist church. I want to get a sign of thing. You go down and you look at their sign and it says, Sun Worship, 9.45 a.m. It's supposed to be Sunday, but I love how you put it. It says, Sun Worship. S-U-N. And you bring that to their attention. Oh, oh, oh. They worship the work of their own hands. You know what's going on behind us? Now, you may not know where I live, but I live in Daytona Beach. You know what's behind me? The Daytona 500. You know what they're worshiping now? Craftsmen. Automobiles that they built with their own hands. You know, holding the steering wheel with their hands. All the products made by man. That's painted all over the cars. Let's get a picture of this guy. Let's get let's get a model of the car he has. Let's get his number and all the stuff that is on the car in a jacket. Let's pay outrageous money. Let's walk around with our team guy's jacket and his shirt. Things haven't changed from 760 BC, the date I have here in my Bible. The worship there. You're in good hands with. Lend me a hand. A handyman. Hands on. That which their own fingers have made. How many of you were to take those, those, those little idols and dollies today, you turn them upside down? Made in China, made in Taiwan. The mean man, that's low, oppressed. That doesn't mean, because the opposite boweth down. The great man, that's opposite of the mean man, humbles himself. They forgive them not. Psalms 109.4. The mean man bows down before the idol. The great man humbles himself before the idol. There's no forgiveness. 
Matter of fact, you add a greater damnation to you, the Bible says, the, the great ten, the commandments. Now look at verse 10. We're, going to, we're running into the second advent again. The end of the tribulation. Enter into the rock. That's what Moses did. And hide thee in the dust. How do you hide yourself in dust? Must be a lot of dust. For the fear of the Lord. And for the glory of his majesty. Oh, men will fear God one day. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled. Lofty. Your heads are in the, in the clouds. In the attic. And the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. Brought down. Cast down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Imagine that. One day when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, the King of the Kings of the Lord of the Lords, he'll be a number one. Too late for many when that sword comes out of his mouth. For the day the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. You see why I told you? From Genesis 1 to Isaiah 2, I've told you God is never for the proud. Proud to be American. Union pride. God's against all that. And upon everyone that is lifted up. CEO. Look who I am. I'm somebody great. <clears throat> and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon, now men are like in the trees, that are high and lifted up. And upon the oaks of Bashan, there's that oak again. Upon all the high mountains, upon all the hills that are lifted up. You know, hug, hug the trees. Mother Earth. Purple majesty from sea to sea, whatever that junky song is. Should be singing praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon every high tower, that's a city fence. It's a defense. Look it out, see who's coming. Are we in protection? Look it over the walls in the city, make sure everything's good. Upon every fenced wall. Upon all the ships of Tarshish, upon all the pleasant pictures, and you find that in Numbers 33 and 52, movie houses, art galleries, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down. See, look at our trees, look at our high mountains, look at our cities, look at our art, look at where we are, we're the great man. And the haughtiness of man shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Again, it's repeated from verse 11. And the idols. He, God, shall utterly abolish, void, destroy. He to see God, Jesus Christ. All right, hand me that Mary. <laughs> Mom, hand me that other Mary. <laughs> Peter, you want to hand me that st statue that does not look anything like you? Thank you. You want me to hand me that chair that they said you sat in? I have a pile of... Let me ask you a question. Who else did that in the Bible? The law carrier, Moses. Didn't he take their golden calf and break it and stamp it and powderize it? Josiah? What would you think if I went to a church today and busted their idol in the name of God? Oh, actually, that's what Jesus Christ is going to do. You know, America is loud in this nation what God hates and calls an abomination. And you put it in the Constitution that they have a right to serve what God hates. And you're going to call yourself a Christian nation? 
Man, if I was going to foundation a, a nation of based upon the Bible and Jesus Christ, I would say only God would be here be the Bible and Jesus Christ. All others don't bring. If you're going to bring, if you're going to bring your idols, then right next to Ellis Island should be a, a big dump island with all the stupid idols that people bring. Nope, you can't have that here. In this country, it's only Jesus Christ. You ain't no Christian nation. When the pilgrims came over here, they came over here with a Bible. Come a long way. Now they don't want the Bible. Now, should, I, should you go out and destroy the idols? It's too late for that. That should have been in, that should have been in the foundation of this country. Back when every city and every township that was started in America founded around... Uh, 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 the meeting home, the meeting house, the meeting hall. You know what that meeting place was? That was the church. There was a time in America that Christmas was a violation of the law and you would be sentenced. I forget if it was having a day off or not. I forget which one it is. But there was a sentence for, for businesses. There was a time of blue laws. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks. Bomb shelter. Luke 23, 29. Revelation 6, 13. <laughs> and you thought the bomb shelters were for nuclear weapons. Oh, they're for Jesus Christ. And into the caves of the earth. Oh. We didn't come from cavemen. Men will become cavemen one day. Hiding from Jesus Christ. The only caveman in the Bible was Lot. You want to read about his life in that cave? Bunga Bunga? I mean, you do know that Fred Flintstone belonged to a lodge. He never went to church a day of his life. For the fear of the Lord. Now that fear of the Lord is too late. That's not, you know, the fear of the Lord bringeth wisdom. The fear of the Lord, I'm hiding. Here he comes. Ah! No, don't come. As he's coming on horseback with his army behind him. Like a bunch of cockroaches when you walk in the kitchen, turn the light. Ow! Oh, oh, light! Get out of here. Don't want it. John chapter 3. I have a message in John chapter 3 about cockroaches and man hiding from the light. And for the glory of his majesty. You know at the end of the tribulation there is no light. The sun's going out. The moon's going out. There's no light. And all of a sudden you see off in the day. What's that? Looks like a train coming. What is that? It's, 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 and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And Jesus Christ don't have headlights on his horse. He ain't carrying a candle. He is the light. Genesis 1. God said, let there be light. That was before the sun. That was before the moon. That was before the stars. Jesus Christ showed up to the earth before Genesis 1. And he's going to show up to the earth again. When he arises to shake terribly the earth. Revelation 16, 18 to 20. Verses, uh, chapter 11, verse 13. Revelation 16, 18, 11, 13. I just told you that. Nope, that note's in there twice. Must be good. Verily, verily. That's confirmed. It was written in my Bible twice. In that day. A man shall cast his idols of silver. Quarters. Half dollars. Electronics, you know, all your electronics have silver in them, and his idols of gold, his watches, his teeth, his earrings, his rings, necklaces, which they shall, well, excuse me, which they made each one for himself to worship. The proof is the proof is around your neck. I've never seen a purple one. I always see them color of gold and silver. 
Not so many people come out with a purple one and make it. To the mold. Underground. And to the bat. That's the caves. Yeah, we're going to say, what do we want to do with this crap? Get it out of here. Don't get us involved in it. To go into the clefts of the rocks where Moses was, but they're hiding. Moses went into the clefts of the rock to be protected to see God's glory. Into the tops of the ragged rocks. For the fear of the Lord, not to get right. And for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terribly the earth again. Revelation 16, 14 to 17, Hebrews 10, 30 and 31, and 2 Thessalonians 1, 7. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils. That came from God, Genesis 2. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Every man will give an account of himself. Jesus Christ is coming for a day of reckoning. To make that which is right, which has been wrong. Don't worry about the idols. Don't worry about breaking them. One day, Jesus Christ on his way back to the earth with us behind him. They will take care of their own idols. And their rosary beads and their trees. Imagine all the churches would be cleaned out. Crickets would be 